pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, November 14th meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. My name is Shelley Fuller, and I serve as chair of the commission. Alongside my colleagues, Commissioner Bob Archer. Good morning. Commissioner Kevin Cook. Good, Good morning. morning. Madam Clerk, the first item, please. First item is item three, consent agenda. There's just three items on the consent agenda. Are there any questions? Madam Chair, I move for approval of the consent agenda as presented. It's a motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item <coughs> four, new business and county clerk number one. Uh, there are no voucher payments today. Uh, number two, consider correction orders. And they have a small, just one or two. Yeah. There's Yeah, there's a few on there. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll move approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item A3, consider approval of resolution number 2016-76, authorizing a 2017 cereal malt beverage license for Petro Deli, Inc., located at 3603 Northwest 46th Street. And commissioners, this is um, obviously the um, time of year for this, so you'll be seeing, seeing several of these coming through. This has um, been approved by the, or reviewed by the county councilor. Townships have been, township has been notified, and health inspection was approved, and the uh, uh, Kansas Bureau of Investigation has also been notified and everything is passed, so, Great. and no back taxes. Great, thank you. I'll move to adopt the resolution. It's motion by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. <coughs> Item B, Parks and Recreation number one, consider approval of request to award the bid for <coughs> removal and replacement of one 24-inch pond overflow tube and one 8-inch drain valve tube at Cypress Ridge Golf Course uh, to Schmidt Line Excavating Inc. at a cost of $33,900 with funding available through the Parks and Recreation Building Maintenance Fund. Good morning, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. Uh, we solicited this for some repairs out there at the uh, uh, at Cypress Ridge Golf Course. Uh, you have both of the, the bids back in front of you. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Our recommendation is to go with Schmidt Line. And the source of the funding? Uh, building Maintenance Fund. Other questions on this item? Madam Chair, I move to award bid to Schmidt Line next meeting incorporated. So motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item B2, consider approval of request to fill a vacant recreation leader position at a salary including benefits of $42,866.28 and approval to fill any positions that become vacant as a result of filling this position. Commissioners, we just recently had a resignation of an employee that worked at our Central Park Community Center. This is a, uh, we currently have a recreation leader position open and are taking <coughs> apps right now. And we could, uh, with Jim Crowell's help, we were able to be able to use both of those apps, provided you allow me to open up to be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, John. Any questions? I'll move to approve the request. <coughs> Submission by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Item C, Public Works Solid Waste, number one, consider approval of resolution number 2016-77, authorizing the placement of streetlights at an intersection of Southwest 21st Street and Southwest Indian Hills Road. Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Flanagan, Public Works. This resolution authorizes the placement of streetlights at the intersection, at the new intersection of 21st and Indian Hills the roundabout that's being constructed by the city of Topeka under the guidelines for designs that we follow and the city follows. Uh, any type of a roundabout that's built must be eliminated and this resolution also allows us to coordinate with West Star Energy. Thanks, Tom. Well, so we're hopefully installing streetlights, that means it's getting closer to being opened. I, I believe so. Hope. I think their target date is the end of December. End of December. Right. Okay. All right. Sure. Questions? Yes. Uh, Tom, a question that comes up frequently is why do we illuminate the roundabouts but not the other roads that we maintain in the county? Basically, that comes back to uh, your decision on the tangent sections, but on the roundabouts, they are controlled by 
federal guidelines relative to the highway department, both KDOT and the feds, and they require the roundabouts to be illuminated to open them, or you jeopardize your uh, possible federal money. Thank you. I move to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? I'll second. Any questions? Um, and, and I was uh, out in that area yesterday, and December may be an optimistic day for <laughs> completion of that project. Um, how many lights will be there, and, and who pays for it? Okay, there will be eight lights. There will be one on each quadrant of the roundabout, and then one on each approach leg to the roundabout. So you'll have a total of eight. Now, Kate, uh, Westar will install them. They will maintain them, and Public Works will just have the electric bill to pay. Okay, so we don't have any installation or capital expense at all? No, sir. Okay, very good. So I, I did second. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Bueller, second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries with three to zero. Item C2, consider approval of request to solicit bids for purchase of compactor attachment to be used for in-house culvert projects at an estimated cost of $12,000 with funds available from the Special Machinery Fund. Commissioners, this is a public works item. Uh, concerns our Komatsu track backhoe. We would like to purchase or solicit bids for a trench compactor, um, vibratory <coughs> uh, trench compactor, and it's coming from our Special Machine Fund. Other questions? Sir? I'll move to approve the request. So second. Motion by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner <coughs> Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item C3, consider approval of request to issue a request for proposal for the purchase of a forklift to be used at the household hazardous waste facility at an estimated cost of $25,000 with funding available from the solid waste collections operational budget. Commissioner, this is a solid waste uh, uh, item. Uh, it's for our household hazardous waste uh, to solicit proposals for a new forklift for that facility. The traffic coming in and out of that facility and the collections that we're experiencing is mandating that we have more efficiency and ability to lift and move heavy items that are coming in and out. And <coughs> we'd like to solicit proposals for that new forklift. Thanks, Tom. Any questions? Yes, I'll, I'll move to approve the request, but note that in your memorandum you said this would be used extensively. Yes, sir. It will be. Thank you. I'll second that motion. I did have some experience in operating a forklift in my very first job out of college, but anyway, <laughs> I enjoyed it. It's I, fun. To have you? Tom, I think you found your first volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> this is her second job. <laughs> Still got one up on the Willard Bridge. No, I do not. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries <coughs> three to zero. Thanks. Thank you. Item B, information technology number one. Consider approval of request to purchase up to 150 Hewlett Packard personal computers and hardware warranties from CW, CDWG at a cost not to exceed $100,000 with funding available from the Information Technology Budget. Good morning, Commissioners. Pat O'Blander with the Information Technology Department. Um, this item is to purchase um, a number of computers from uh, uh, the line item budget that we have in the IT budget for uh, technology refreshment of computers, along with some year-end funds. We did an RFP back in uh, September that resulted in some responses. Uh, one, the winner of that was awarded to a CDWG and they have informed us that they would provide the same pricing for the uh, any purchases that we make of computers through the end of this year. Uh, they would honor all of the pricing that they gave us. And I'm requesting that we uh, use that same pricing uh, rather than go out and do a whole other RFP uh, since we just, just did one. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you, Matt. Any questions from the commission? I have moved for approval. It's a motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Three to zero. Item D2, consider approval of request to solicit bids for the purchase of Microsoft Software Assurance. Uh, Commissioner, this item is for uh, <laughs> what Microsoft refers to as software assurance. Uh, this 
product is required by Microsoft for installations of SQL Server software that we install on our virtualization platforms. Uh, the Software Assurance Program is what Microsoft provides so that we can move to uh, current versions of SQL Server as they become available, rather than purchasing them as they become available. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, they do require that we maintain Software Assurance for licenses that are installed on virtualization platforms. Uh, we'd just like to do an RFQ on those. Uh, we don't have an exact count because we're still trying to ascertain exactly which um, uh, software uh, version or SQL server licenses are up for renewal at this point. Uh, there's kind of a, uh, they come at different times and uh, hopefully we'll get all of these taken care of at the end of this year, but some of them may go into next year. But we do want to go ahead and do an RFQ for, uh, pricing for those that do become um, eligible for payment out of this year's budget. If you have any questions, you may have to answer those. Thanks, Pat. Any questions, I'll move approval to the request. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Item E, County Councilor Number One, consider a approval request to fill the legal secretary position at a salary including benefits of $42,692.80. Good morning, Commissioners. <coughs> Rich Eckert, Shawnee County Councilor. When my uh, legal secretary read item F2, she immediately resigned. <laughs> so um, at this point, we're going to need to replace her. This is a very important position. And um, if we could get started on that. And, and the answer is no, I will not be around to hire this person. We'll let agenda item F2 do that hiring. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Any questions or a motion? Move to approve. So motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item F, Commission number one, consider approval of resolution number 2016-78 allocating the social service aging and alcohol drug funding for 2017. Does anyone want to speak on this item, GR? <coughs> Good morning, Commissioners. G.R. Laughlin with Community Resources Council. Just wanted uh, to uh, reiterate our thanks again uh, to you all in uh, supporting uh, the social services and the senior programs within our community. Um, the social services for um, uh, uh, the grants was 221,931, and the senior SPEs were at 696, uh, 696,000. So if there's any questions, um, I'd be glad to answer them. Thanks, Chair. Has everyone been notified? All the agencies been notified? All the agencies have been notified okay. of pending your approval. Pending approval. Okay. Thank you. Questions for GR at this time? Okay. And then Max, are you speaking? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, always good to be here once a year at least. <coughs> uh, I'm representing the Alcohol and Drug Council, which I think has been in existence for probably around 40 years. I've only been around it 25 years. I think you have to die to get off of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that. <laughs> we, we, have, uh, we have 49,000 available in the special alcohol and drug funds uh, this current year and also projected for next year. As you can see on the sheets that were handed out, funding, uh, PARS pr uh, intervention and evaluation, formerly known as Youth Evaluation Program, uh, the third judicial district's drug court, Malayo social detox, all of these totaling 49,000. We basically level funded them from what was uh, granted this year or next year. I do have one correction on the top of the third, second page uh, on the judicial drug court, uh, the third judicial district's drug court. These are county funds, not city funds, mm -hmm. that pay for a portion of the uh, treatment services. All those funds go to treatment services. Any questions? We do not have any questions, commissioners. No. No. And again, for the public, we uh, we approved these amounts um, during budget time in August, and then um, between your task force and then um, CRC, uh, then those recommendations are put forward uh, to the commission. So this is a result of that. Betty, you have something bad? Betty Griner, Director of Administrative Services. With the uh, special um, alcohol, get the right wording. Special yeah. alcohol and drug? Yes. Those are funds that actually come from the state. 
that we turn around and distribute out. So Those are not part of our budgeted funds. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Um, I would encourage you to contact your uh, Kansas City County lobbyists and any parks and rec lobbyists that, that are around, and we have contacted our uh, Kansas Association of Addiction Professionals to uh, educate the uh, legislators about the importance of these funds. Mm -hmm. A third go to, go to treatment and prevention funds, a third of these funds go to parks and rec, and a third to uh, county general fund. And uh, that's after the t state takes their, uh, their piece of it. But they're, um, They've been notorious last year, and it will be even worse this year. It's sweeping funds, uh, and I think these are these are uh, at risk. Mm -hmm. So anything you could do to protect those funds would be really helpful. Thank you. Max, actually, um, tomorrow going to the Kansas Association of Counties, their annual conference, and setting legislative priorities, so Good. timing. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments? Madam Chair, I move for approval of Resolution 2016-78. Submission by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor? Anyone wanting to speak on this item? I should make sure. And, and yes. we should thank. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank all of you. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to introduce everybody who's here, though, GR and Max? Because they, they do a lot of work on this. Yes. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. And thanks again for all your efforts on this. Appreciate it. Item F2, consider approval of resolution number 2016-79, appointing James Crowell as the Shawnee County Counselor, effective December 1, 2016. Commissioners, due to the resignation of Mr. Eckert, the action before us today is to fill the position of county counselor with the best, most qualified and professional person. And uh, I believe, and I think you'll join me in believing that Jim Crowell is the best person for to be named our next county counselor. So comments or, comments or questions or <coughs> Rich, do you have? Just a brief one, <coughs> if you can imagine how President Obama feels with the new president-elect coming in. <laughs> my feelings are exactly the opposite. This is the <laughs> best decision that, that you could have made, and I'm very happy for Mr. Corral, who has earned this through his loyalty and dedication to Shawnee County. Thanks, Rich. Uh, yeah, that's hard to talk. Uh, <laughs> So in, in the immortal words of uh, the uh, James Brown, uh, <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> and congratulations to Jim. I think yeah, she, uh, Commissioner Archer spent all night thinking that yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, was that a motion, Commissioner Archer? Yes, it was. I'll second. <laughs> A motion by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. Anyone wanting to speak on this item? Mr. Crowell? You want us to vote first? All those in favor say aye. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Congratulations. Thank you very much for this. Honor and the confidence you're showing in me, I'll do my best to work hard to prove this decision to be right. Um, it's bittersweet for me because for me to take this position, this means that my good friend, Rich Eckers, leaving the county. I wouldn't be standing here without him, um, so I want to acknowledge that. Um, it's also bittersweet because I'll be leaving the Human Resources Office. Mm -hmm. We've got great staff there. Any su successes we've had are due to them and due to Betty's assistance of me in that position. So happy, looking forward, um, and appreciate it very much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Congratulations again. Thank you. Yes. Item G, Administrative Services, number one, consider uh, a re I'm sorry, request approval to advertise and replace the position of Director of Human Resources. 
Betty Greiner, Director of uh, Administrative Services, and since uh, Jim has been appointed as the uh, new county counselor, I would like permission to advertise and replace uh, the Director of Human Resources. Thank you, Betty. Move to approve. It's a motion by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item G2, update on revenues and expenditures. Okay, good morning. I'm here for the uh, snapshot view of our financial overview for October 31st of 2016. We will start on the revenue side. Um, there has been very little change in the variance um, from what it was last month. Um, the, we have a positive variance for the month of October for total revenue of $3,826. <laughs> so, so since the variances have, have changed such a little amount, um, I'll you know, go over the amounts that we've spent, but not you know, d uh, to too much time on the variances themselves. <coughs> This shows that our total revenue year to date through October 31st is $98,212,315. Uh, you can see this chart. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I will say our, our total year to date budget variance is a positive variance of $1,006,676, which um, represents just about exactly 1% of our budget. And I'll go into to detail a little bit more where those variances lie. Um, but this chart just really shows the difference in where our um, revenue comes from, uh, the total as compared to the budget and the prior year. Um, you can see that uh, we are very close to where we were um, at this time last year. Uh, there's a $163,000 difference um, in those two numbers. So, uh, we'll go into the different categories. The first category is property tax revenue. We've received $74,457,122. And uh, we are under budget $308,000 on this, which is, like I say, pretty much the same as it has been. Um, and uh, in the scheme of things, when you look at 308000 compared to the total amount, that is a very reasonable um, amount to be under budget. The next area is other tax revenue. We've received $14,872,490. That is a positive variance of $1,140,000 that we've received over budget. And that is made up of primary, primarily three categories. Um, special assessments are, have come in at $482,000 over what had been budgeted. Um, we've had some catch up on the special assessments uh, come in. The motor vehicle fees and taxes, um, or mainly the motor vehicle taxes, are at $425,000 um, over what was budgeted. That's a, a state estimate that comes in and there's or over that uh, state estimate. And the other is the city, high, city county highway tax. That came in at 347000 over what was budgeted by the state. <coughs> okay, the next is property related fees. We've received $1,859,870. And uh, you can see on this one that we have a positive budget variance uh, year to date of 520,000 and that is just from mortgage fees if you'll recall we had one very large mortgage that was filed that uh, really boosted that up and uh, you know this is just a, a indicates how many mortgages have been filed and what the amounts of those are <coughs> next is charges for services we received four million one hundred and seven thousand and seventy one dollars this, we are under budget in this category by $709,000. Um, they're again the same categories that have 
we have had all year. Parks and Rec is under budget of $545,000, and um, the Department of Corrections is 200000 under budget. But as you will see when we get into the expense side, both of those departments are also under in their expense categories also. And then our other revenue, we've received $2,915,762. That is $363,000 over budget. Um, the main category in that one um, is investment income, has been up this year. So um, that makes up the, the major portion of that. Here's our pie chart that shows the percentages of uh, revenue that come from the different categories. Property taxes make up 76% of our revenue. Other taxes, 15%. Property-related fees, 2%. Charges for services, 4%. And then miscellaneous, 3%. Any questions on the revenues? Madam Chair. Yes. Betty, I, I don't know how much to read into this, but if I look at it, the big news out of the revenue side is, but for property taxes, we would not be making our budget projection. That's the only area that's over our prior year from last year. Right. Um, you know, I, we have a positive 163,124 over last year, but that's only due in part by property taxes being paid. Yes. And the emails that we're getting from the Board of Realtors say that, you know, housing sales aren't really great, at, I mean, they're kind of leveling off. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if this shouldn't be a forecaster for us to be cautious in the upcoming year as we look, because we're not seeing the same level of revenue from all the other categories. No, we're not. Uh, that is the only one that has increased from the prior year. And it re increased $1,600,000 in the prior year. Now, part of that is also uh, property appreciation. Um, that accounts for some, you know, that's increases in property taxes also. Now that is something, though, that uh, will be limited under the uh, tax lid that mm -hmm. will come into effect in 2018. I, I know our appraiser was here earlier. I don't see him here now. But um, in prior communications, he only talked about a very, very modest appreciation in uh, valuation at you know, one to one and a half percent over the next year. So if we did not raise our property tax, our mill levy last year. We did not, right. And so if we have to look at it, um, again, I, I'm wondering if that shouldn't be a cautionary for us in the upcoming year to say we may not have as much money coming in as we did in, your, in the last year. Maybe it's about the same, but again, I'm just trying to be. Well, for 17, you know, we budget based, it based on our estimated um, valuations, and, and we did see some increase in assessed values. Uh, and, and we did not in, in change the mill levy, but there will be some additional monies coming in from new construction as well as some appreciation in properties. So, uh, but what we have to be very cautious of is especially in 2018, yeah. because uh, regardless of what appreciation we see, mm -hmm. uh, we will be limited by the amount of the increase in the CPI. Right. Yeah. Commissioner Yeah, and, and I concur with uh, Commissioner Cook's <coughs> statement. I, I think the thing is, though, when Betty has led us through budget discussions, mm -hmm. she's been cautious and conservative in projections, and that's that's why we're doing as well as we, we are now, I think, uh, for, for variance. So you're correct. It, it is a cautionary sign. But going into 17, as Commissioner Archer said, we did look at a conservative approach mm -hmm. in, in that, you know, I would rather us be over budget right. a little bit, you know, like 1%, like than for us to look at being under and, and then having a, to deal with that. And I, I guess, just again, Madam Chair, if I may, yes. but for that property taxes, our headline would read, county not receiving as much money as they did last year. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, and it points to the fact, again, that we don't receive sales tax money into our general fund. That's um, correct. This, this, the cities in Kansas have the ability to levy sales tax. Oftentimes they do to 
lower the burden on property taxes, that the demand transfers and everything that was passed statewide to help lower property taxes for counties, those have not been in effect for almost 10 years, I think. Now, so. yeah. And they have franchise fees? I mean, uh, they're, they're they're revenues munici yeah, they're municipalities they're have a, a variety of ways to mm -hmm. tax. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and the only sales tax we receive goes into JADO. JADO for economic development and for infrastructure, and the new interlocal will start in January. So, yeah. All right. <coughs> Anything else on revenue? Yeah. Okay. We'll go on to the expenditure side. We have, through October 31st, spent eighty million one hundred and fourteen thousand eight hundred and forty-four thousand dollars. Um, the monthly budget variance for the month of October was $92,000. So there again, just right on, on budget on both sides, on revenues and, and expenses for the month. Uh, but our total variance year to date, uh, we, are, we have spent under budget, so it's a positive variance of $1,987,000. Now there again, you know, I mentioned some of those that were down. The revenue was down. Well, those expenses are also down, and we'll go through that in the different categories. And this chart shows the total, so you can kind of see that the levels of, um, you can see that where our total revenue compares to the budgeted for the year to date and the prior <coughs> year to date, and then the different categories. And this, we'll go into this later too, but you can see that public safety is our la largest category. Okay, our first category is public safety. We have spent $33,085,128. Um, this is the one that has the vast majority of that variance. We have a variance of $1,127,000 that uh, we have spent less than we, that was budgeted. That is made up primarily of three different areas. Department of Corrections is $969,000 under what we had budgeted. Um, I'll remind you that they were $200,000 under in revenue. And then the DA's office is $77,000 under what I had budgeted. And the Sheriff's office is now $68,000 under what I had budgeted. They were much higher than that before and, and with their spending there, down to $68,000 over budget. So that's really what makes up um, that, that variance. The next area is public health. We spent nine, nine million four hundred and thirty thousand nine hundred dollars and that is right on our budgeted amount. Administrative services, we have spent eight million six hundred and six thousand five hundred and forty seven dollars. Um, that is one hundred and fifty three thousand <coughs> under budget and um, most of that right now is in IT because I know, well, and he just received your permission to spend 100000 <laughs> so, uh, so some of that is a timing, a timing issue on IT there. Next category is public works. We've met, spent $6,995,253. That is right on um, budget. And as always, I will... Um, mentioned that this does not include those um, projects that are paid by the uh, JADO and, and the sales staff. Next category is Parks, Recreation, and Expo Center. We've spent $11,921,909. That is $644,000 under what was budgeted. Um, that is pretty much uh, all parks and recreation. Um, so that is 640,000, 44,000 under budget in expenses, but I'll remind you that in, on the revenue side, they were 545,000 under revenue. So those offset each other. And then the last category is debt service. We've spent $10,075,108. Um, that is 62,000 under what was budgeted because of some refinancing we were able to do. And um, this, well, and I'll discuss this in the, in the last, in the next section, but we have paid all of our debt service for the year. Um, 
So this item will not change throughout the rest of the year. This chart just shows the different categories um, and in for each category it shows the current, which is in blue, the budget, which is in red, and the green, which is prior year. And uh, you can just, this shows the uh, amount that is paid in public safety compared to the other areas. And you can see it's more than two and a half times any other area that we spend money in. And then this is a pie chart that shows the same thing. 41% uh, was spent in public safety. Public health is 12%. Admin services, 11%. Public works, 9%. Parks, rec, and expo center, 15%. And debt service is 12%. And debt service right here is 12%, but by the end of the year, that will go down because the other categories, the price, you know, the increase will increase in expenditures and that one will not. So that 12% uh, will go down to about 10%. Okay, and any questions? Thank you, Debbie. Any questions? No. No? Okay. Thank you. Item 5, Administrative Communications. Just a reminder to everyone that uh, the commission will not be in session on Thursday. We will be um, acting as the Board of Canvassers, uh, so we'll be at the election office. Um, and then the 21st, we are not in session. The 24th is Thanksgiving. So our next meeting back here will be the 28th of November. Good morning, Commissioners. Justin Gregory, Kansas Secretary of Center. Uh, Recovering from the blizzard bash demo derby this weekend, <laughs> we had. I uh, just have some numbers here to recap the event. It was a four day event, hosted over 31 hours of competition in four days. Uh, just shy of 18,000 attendees uh, came to the event. Uh, 258 cars representing 22 states and four Canadian provinces were represented. Uh, approximately 3,800 room nights were utilized over this four day event. Uh, with an economic impact of well over four million. So needless to say, we were very pleased with our uh, demo derby hosted by Sam Williams and Elkhamite Derby. If you did miss it, uh, you have an honor chance to come back. He's doing another demo derby with us at the Expo Center in March. Um, we're going to have to make a little few changes. Um, one of them being is our cash machine ran out of cash on Saturday morning. So we're going to have to have that refilled. Uh, on Saturday morning, which is a new one for us. We didn't <laughs> see that coming. Um, going forward, I know the commission won't be in uh, session for uh, the next week. Just giving you a heads up on what's coming to the Expo Center. Uh, this weekend we have Holiday Mart. Also Saturday morning we'll begin our public skate uh, for the month of November, December. Don't tell Mother Nature what we're doing. Yeah. Fine with the 70 degree weather. <laughs> yeah. uh, we welcome back the Roadrunners on December 2nd and 3rd uh, for two home games. Uh, also December 3rd we are hosting uh, Wing Fling, which is a one-day wing cook-off. Uh, we'll have refreshments, we'll have the KU game on, uh, some other games. But uh, just wanted to give everybody a heads up and kind of an uh, update on what the uh, Blizzard Bash uh, numbers were. And it was, uh, once again, it was one of the neatest events I've ever seen at the Any questions? I was over at the Cap Plaza Hotel on Thursday afternoon for a meeting, and there was a buzz. I mean, mm -hmm. that place was packed. Yeah. And like I said, if you, if you missed it, Sam's coming back in March. So. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Randy Luby, Parks and Rec. Um, we've got a lot of events just starting up, but we've got two of our bigger events. We have the uh, Holiday Festival and Craft Bazaar that will be held for the first time at Oakland Community Center starting Friday and Saturday. Um, it's basically the, all the crafts that we we combined the um, the traditional uh, holiday craft festival we had at our Shawnee North Community Center with one that we had at Garfield, and we combined them. And then we need a little larger place, so we're at Oakland Community Center now. Um, Friday it kicks off at 10 a.m. and goes to 7 p.m. and Saturday 8 to uh, 3 p.m. Also the uh, Winter Wonderland starts up on um, already on Friday and Saturday. We have the walkthrough um, on Friday night, followed by a Wheel Wonderland, which is a 
basically bicycles to be able to come out. We're partnering with the Topeka uh, Metro uh, bikes for that. And then the next night on Saturday is the 5K run, which is partnered with the Sunflower State Games. Actual vehicle traffic will start on November uh, 23rd, and um, the gates open at 6 o'clock for that. Um, and, and it runs through the end of the year. Hope everybody enjoys the holidays. Yeah. Doesn't feel like the holidays right now, but it's Saturday. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Anyone else for administrative communications? No? Commissioner? No. Commissioner Kate? Commissioner Archer? No. No? Okay. Um, just again, I will be traveling to Overland Park for the Kent Association of Counties Conference, so I'll be there. I'll be there Tuesday and Wednesday and then back for the campus on Thursday. So um, next item, please. Item six executive session. And I do not believe there is a need. Uh, so we are adjourned. Thank you.